What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko. Today we're here with Luca. And uh, Luca came second place today at Locals, unfortunately. Um, he beat me. Uh, but he flipped order game three, so that's don't, not don't fair. Leave, don't that's not life. fair. If you guys haven't checked out the vlog, make sure to check out the vlog. He's in it. We explain it in a lot more detail there. But he's playing Unchained, which is a really cool deck. And um, honestly, I had a really hard time, and apparently everyone had a really hard time against it. Yeah, I'm uh, kind of cracked at this game. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Uh, so, starting the deck off, I played uh, Triple Unchained Twin Aruha. So this is your main starter of the deck. And so what it does is you can target one card you control, uh, special summon this card, and then destroy the card that you targeted with it. Basically, uh, all of the little ones, so like the, the, the three-star ones, are all, um, when they're destroyed by card effect, they summon another unchained monster from the deck. Yep. If destroyed by battle, ha have a different, have the same effect. Yep. So this is the best starter because it activates from hand, obviously doesn't use your normal summon. Yep. Uh, so I played three Unchained Twin Rakea. So this is the other starter in the deck. What it does is you can quick effect target another card on the field that you control and destroy it. Yep. So this also starts your Unchained combos and stuff. Yep. And then uh, I played three Unchained Twin Sarama. So this is the reason you want to play the deck because um, it's your recursion, it's your grind. Um, it, it does everything you really want it to. Yep. So what it does is you can target one unchained card uh, you control, or in your graveyard, set it to your field, and then destroy another card you control. So basically you're setting it, you're setting like your trap cards from the graveyard, and then you can either destroy the trap card, or you can destroy another monster. That's so crazy, the fact that you just set your traps and pop them, and then it's free special. Yeah, it's just free recursion, free, everything yep. realistically summon from deck and grind as well is kind of insane yep uh, and then i played two abominable unchained soul so basically this is uh what you're playing going second and also it's like a material going first yep um so what he does is when he summoned you can discard a card and then non-targeting destroy a card on your field yep um, which is really, really good because either you can trigger your own unchain, which doesn't really come up very often, but it will occasionally, or you can destroy any card your opponent controls. He also summons himself back if he's destroyed. Yeah, but uh, you can only special summon him once per turn, so if you leave him on field and destroy him, uh, it's kind of... It's kind of weird because if he can come back on your opponent's turn, obviously, but it's it's just not it doesn't come up very much. Yep. One unchained solo disaster. Yep. So basically, he's the brick of the deck. Yep. This is the main deck version of the link monsters of the deck. So basically, um, what it does is you can target a card your opponent or a monster your opponent controls, and then you can link summon one dark link monster using this and your opponent's monster as material. Yep. And then we play three Abominations Prison, so this is effectively um, a Rota. Rota. So yeah. it searches any unchained card from your deck to your hand, and then also when it's uh, when it being set is destroyed, it summons another one from deck. Yep. Which is um, kind of insane. Uh, so three Escape, and then three Abomination or three Abominable Chamber of the Unchained. These, these, it, I'm sorry, these names suck. Yeah. Um, but you want to max out on them. Yeah, so this is just Chamber, this is Escape. Yep. Um, they all have the same effect where, or they both have the same effect. When destroyed, they summon another uh, Unchained monster from your deck. Yep. And then these two ha also have unique effects where this one will special summon uh, an Unchained monster from your hand or graveyard. Yep. And then this one will uh, target one Unchained you, uh, you control and one card on the field, destroy them both. Yep. So this is like... Um, it's kind of like an Icarus attack. Yeah, it's Icarus attack, but you only target one. Yeah. Honestly, if these didn't have the uh, pop effects, they'd be really, really mediocre as cards. Yeah, but I mean, that's why it synergizes so well. Yep. And then for hand traps, I played three Imperm. Yep. So uh, I feel like this is kind of self-explanatory, but yep. Imperm is basically, um, it's effect veiler, but in trap form, searchable yep. off trap trick. It just does a lot of crazy stuff. And I played three Ash. So uh, Ash, standard. also standard, stops Fusion Destiny, which is really important. Not with this deck, any deck that's playing uh, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer is just a buy. Yeah. Because, um, you know... Because everything is going to trigger. Yeah, everything, all the cards say Destroy on them, and when destroyed, they'll summon another one from deck. And then the Spice I played today was Three Dimension Shifter. Yep. So this isn't really something a lot of people play, but... Uh, fun fact about the Unchained cards, they can trigger from the Banished Pile as well. Because so they, they don't need to be set to Grave, they just need no, to be destroyed. they just need to be destroyed by card effect yeah. in order to trigger. So yeah. you can Banish them, obviously, 
because of that, Surama doesn't trigger as much. But Shifter is a really, really powerful card going against combo, going against mid range. Obviously, um, when your opponent activates Fusion Destiny, like they always do, yep. um, this banishes the materials so they can't recur that as well. Yep. So, a card's just really strong, except when you're playing against Stun. Shoutouts to Chair. He's not a good player. Uh, he just plays Border. Yeah, he, he, he plays Border and uh, has fun with that, apparently. I don't know, man. It's And then I played three Pot of Extravagance, so. Just draw power. Draw power, obviously. Um, Pot of Prosperity is good in this deck. But uh, because this deck is really, really consistent, you need the card advantage a lot more than you need to be able to just pick one out of the deck. Also, also, I think you don't need the extra deck that much. Uh, no, you don't. So yeah, basically, so. you have one relevant link monster, kind of yeah. like Altergeist. Uh, Shoutouts to uh, yo, our come boy on, bro, for, uh, for throwing, playing Altergeist. Bro, come on. Yeah, he flipped order, and I had extravagant hand. That's your fault. That's not mine. Uh, and then I played one called by the grave. You know, yep. really good generic tool. Of course. Uh, and yeah, that's it. And then for traps, I played Double Torrential. Uh, card's really strong. Uh, it triggers all the Unchained Monsters. I would run it at 3 if not for the fact that I didn't want to go over 40. Yep. Uh, I felt like Called by the Grave performed a lot better than this would because Ash really hurts this deck sometimes yep. if you don't start with a Ruha. And then I played... <laughs> Three trap trick. Because uh, so, it searches all the traps. Yeah, so it searches all of your traps. Um, it also searches the unchained traps, searches imperm. Cards always live, always good to see in your hand. Yep. Except going second, then you side it out because it's really, really bad. Yep. Makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's really strong. And then, uh, the then MVP this card. Of the day. Then this the card. Of the day. Then this card. Bro, go this watch the vlog. This guy. Oh, I, I feel like uh, my boy. My boy uh, Spanko over here really wants to punch this old man's face. Listen, I'm not gonna lie though, I abuse it just as much as you do. Yeah, yeah. I hate when they use it against me, but I love using it against people. Yeah, it's kind of like Vanity's Emptiness or any other uh, one, of the, uh, one of floodgates. Really strong floodgates. Yeah. Um, so that's a yeah, I drew right? this card six times in four rounds today. That's was... broken. That's eight games, if you think about it. <laughs> Guys, I promise, I promise I'm not the YCS winner, okay, man? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not cheating here. You're, just, right. be you're just better than everyone, apparently. Yeah, yeah. People just don't seem to recognize that. Yeah. Uh, and then for the Link Monsters, so I played three Unchained Soul of Rage. So this is the really, really good Link Monster. Um, he just does everything you want him to. The good dog, the one you, d uh, the one you like seeing on your field. Yep. Um, so what he does is during your opponent's main phase, you can quick effect link summon a dark link monster. Yeah. Using it, and if it's destroyed by battle or card effect, it can add an unchained card back from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah. Card's good. Is effectively the same thing as the other one, but it's uh, it's only during your turn. Yep. And it's not a quick effect, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's fine, I guess. It's not very... Good. Again, this is why you play Extrap, because you just, you don't care. Yeah, and then uh, I played two Unicorn. This is usually what you're going into off of uh, Unchained Soul of Rage. Yep. Uh, it was really, really good. Uh, wouldn't cut... I, I might actually up that ratio. Oh, okay. Because uh, it, was, it was really strong. Uh, I played one Boral Code Talker, or a Boral Code Dragon. Yep. This is, uh, this is funny. So, basically, the synergy with Unchained is... Um, it outs Dragoon, okay. number one, which, which is the biggest problem you have with... Uh, well, it's not as relevant anymore, which is why I played it today. Yeah. But uh, Boral Code is just really good generically. So if you guys don't know what it does, um, the, the monster effect, I don't actually even know what Apparently it does. Apparently he doesn't know what it does either. Uh, yeah, so the actual monster effect is basically a vanilla. Uh, but the second effect, so while it's in the graveyard... You can uh, non-targeting banish a dark monster with 3,000 or more attack on either side of the field and special summon one topologic monster from your extra deck. So you're literally just using it to send the grave, El Dragoon, and then I'm assuming you're gonna send, show me a topologic monster. Yeah, so uh, I played two topologic monsters, Trisjana and Zeroboros. Yep, makes sense. So Zeroboros is just really, really good generically. Uh, it gains attack, or 200 attack for every banished card. And then and if Triz is just crazy against back row. Yeah, so this is really good against back row. Not that I had any problems. Shout out to Spanko yet Yo, again. Yo, you didn't even me. see my back row. Skill issue. You Skill literally issue. didn't see Skill my issue. back row. Skill issue. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, if a monster is summoned to an arrow, this this card points to special summon. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, banish all cards on the field, and then this guy returns in the standby phase. Yeah. So he's really really strong. 
And then we have Topologic Trisbano, which is if a monster is special summoned to a zone uh, this card points to, banish as many of those monsters as possible. And then you can banish. Uh, uh, all, I'm pretty sure it's all ba uh, spells yeah, yeah, on the yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. And then you infl uh, inflict 500 damage to each. Uh, to for each, each one banished. For each one banished, yeah. yeah cards it's, crazy it's really in time. strong. Yeah, cards crazy in time. And then uh, for the rest of the cards I played, I played Phoenix, obviously. Oh, uh, back row removal, it's like uh, Nightmare Unicorn, except just for back row and it destroys it instead. I played um, Blackluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. Uh, don't buy this card, it sucked all day. Did literally nothing, maybe would have come up against the Eldritch player if, if it was relevant at all. If it was a Fiend, it would have been really good. The card good. sucks. Uh, so basically, when it's made with, um... Here, I'll just zoom in so that people can read it. Yeah, so if it's made with, a um, uh, level 7 or higher monster, yep. you can, um, it becomes untargetable and undestroyable by card effects. Yep. And, uh, the materials really suck. It's three or more monsters with different names. Yeah. So you're never really making it. Yeah, it's, it's not very relevant, but when it does come up against, like, an Eldritch player or something, you boost it to 4,500 with its effect, and, um... It's, and it becomes untargetable, right? Yeah, it becomes untargetable, yeah, undestroyable. All of uh, both your unchained big guys are like on level eight, yeah. so you can. It's really strong. And then, um, so basically, when it destroys a monster by battle, uh, there are three things you can do. You can make it gain fifteen hundred attack. You can banish a card on the field, or during your next uh, battle phase. Uh, keep that in mind. It's garbage. Uh, next battle phase is like. You can attack twice. You cannot attack twice. It's like the other BLS, but worse. Oh. So during your next battle phase, it can attack twice. Okay, yeah. That's so it's, it's like re the that last effect is just. Would you cut that for the third unicorn? Uh, I probably would, but at the same time, there's a lot of like really weird rogue matchups. Oh, okay, okay. Stuff like um, Fluanderies. They might come up in. I don't really know how they outed. That's true. All right. Or actually, they have uh, the mysterious C thing where it attributes it. Uh, and then for the rest of the cards, Unchained Abomination. Yep. Um, this is kind of fine in Unchained. You never really make it at all. It's whatever. Yep. Um, so basically, if a card on the field is destroyed by card effect, destroy another, except by this card, destroy another card. Um, if, a car, if a monster is destroyed by battle, destroy a card. And then during the end phase of each turn, destroy a card. Yep. It, it, it just says destroy a lot. Don't, don't worry about it. Yep. Um, and then for the final card, I played Axis Code Talker. Just OTK. Yeah, just OTK. Uh, that's kind of what you're climbing into with the Boral Code. Yep. So the idea is if the Dragoon has already used its negate, so you can uh, make Bor uh, you make Boral Code, and then Boral Code plus another monster, let's say uh, the BLS, because, well, it's, it's horrible. So you link these two off. Make access code, use its effect to gain, uh, to make it 5,300 attack. Up to. And then you'll use Boral Code, banish itself from the graveyard. To get rid of the Dragoon. To get rid of the Dragoon, and then it summons the Topologic Bomber, or er, Zero Boros. Boros. And then this is 8,300 attack points directly to the face. That's pretty good. So you can out Dragoon Pass now. Yep. It's Anything else? Yeah, this deck just folds, realistically. Uh, Dragoon's really, really bad yeah. for this deck. Good thing you people don't play right now. Yeah. All right, let's get into the side deck. Cause he did top, so let's show him the, let's show him the side deck. But again, side deck really depends on what your locals is like. So I played three Lancia. Uh, card is Good. fine, I guess. We we have Chair who plays Grimaju. Uh I didn't really want to play against that today. I played. Let's see here. I played the one Pancratops. Um, came up against this guy again. Shout yeah, out it to, did. It shout did. Out, shout out to Spangle for did. losing to me again. It did. Um, and then I played triple Dark Ruler no more. So Dark Ruler, obviously a really solid card. Outs every board right now, really. Um, except the, uh, I guess, the reason I was playing Dark Ruler was because I thought I'd be seeing Infernoble today. Yeah, but it outs really a lot of boards. Yeah, um, it's it's good against the bird deck if, they're, if they can't set up both. Yep. Um, it's also really strong against like other matchups. Yeah, yeah it's, a good, it's, a, it's a good card. Yeah, and then I played Harpy's Feather Duster. Of course. Yeah, na naturally, uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, really, really solid card. Uh, shout outs to Spangle yet again. No, he, you didn't hit me with this, did you? No, 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 I drew it. I just didn't use it because my hand was literally like four generics. Must then, be nice. No, 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 no combo. So. Yes. And then I played Triple Evenly Matched. So evenly. Um, Breaks combo boards. 
It breaks a lot of boards. Uh, shout out to you for getting evenly today. You're evenly me for one, though. Yeah, it wasn't a great evenly. It's because I had four generics yet again. And then the spice. So this is this is the tech. We played um, Scythe and Triple Saint, though. Yep. Unfortunately, for, uh, for Unchained players, Rakea does have to lock you just yep. so you can't use it with the artifacts. Yep. Um, so basically, uh, Rakea fiend locks you, so does Aruha, but... But I mean, this is trap trickable. Yeah, this is also trap trickable, which this is really is strong, so you have like six copies of this. Um, this can also summon Lancia, just in case you do draw one of them. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, I guess you could. Yeah, so theoretically that works as well. Um, this card's just really, really solid. Um, yeah. Beats interaction as well, like... Beats combo, if you just go for it, turn one, you draw it, you win. Yeah, um... The only thing I'd say about this is uh, just don't draw the site. Yeah. So I mean, I guess it's not even that bad if you're in this deck. Just draw order instead, like. Yeah, just what draw order, doing? bro. Just draw order instead of this. Like, what are you doing, man? This All right, Luca, bro. Congratulations on second place today. It's a fun deck. I mean, not yeah. fun to play against. Uh, but thank you. Um, I'm getting you back next time. I'm getting you back next time. Shut up, bro. That's gonna be bad. Actually, probably not. Sure, but sure I hope so. Uh, do you have any shout outs before we uh, head out? Um, Shout out to Spanko. Hey. Shout out to Imperial Order. Hey, tell them to subscribe because I'm almost at 5k. Yeah, I actually do hit the subscribe button. There you go. And also uh, become a channel member today. Let's go. And uh, Spanko Hype Man. Also, don't forget to flame in the comments for losing to Imperial Order playing Geist. Shout out to, uh, to Peter for losing to Order. Everyone um, just loses to Order against you apparently. Shout out to Eli. All right, uh, well, thank you guys all for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Luca, thank you again. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, like we just said, and with that, Spanko and Luca signing out. Peace!